Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to another very special, as always, episode of the Hyperconscious Podcast. We hope you enjoyed our latest episode where we sat down with the one and only Samantha Skelly, and she went through an amazing breathwork mastermind and had most of us crying. Fire episode. Today, for episode number 403, we are going to talk 400. I know. Crazy. Cross another milestone. We are going to talk about the only two reasons your relationships aren't working. So to provide a little context, like I try to do, I've come to the realization through coaching, speaking, especially coaching, and then you and I talk about relationships constantly, and again, through speeches, podcasting, interviewing other people, coaching, and and especially coaching, now that I have 10 full-time clients, I've really gotten to understand relationships at a deeper level. And what I've found is that whether Kevin and I are disconnected or Emilia and I or me and a client, it's usually because of one of two, a combination of one of two things, goals in conflict or core values in conflict. And I'll give a small example. Imagine if you have a client who is paying you money to achieve their fitness goals. The moment that I decided I didn't want to do fitness coaching, I could sense a disconnect. Mm. Because the reason someone else is there and paying me is to reach their fitness goals. I don't really want to do fitness coaching anymore. Now, all of a sudden, it's a different dynamic. And that's the example of like a goal in conflict. If I don't want a fitness coach anymore and someone else is paying me to reach their fitness goals, that's going to shift the relationship, whether I like it or not on a subconscious level. And then core values, here's another example. Let's say... You're friends with someone who you've been friends with for a really long time, and they love to go out and party. And you, you quit drinking and decide that alcohol is no longer for you. And again, I'm speaking from experience. Now, all of a sudden, you no longer have that in common, and it's a core value in conflict. If this person constantly wants to spend time drinking and going out, and you don't, that's a core value that you no longer share. Whereas before, you used to be able to have fun, unique experiences with these, this person based around drinking, going out and drinking. I think the, the awareness is so important because if you're friends with somebody because you used to be friends and not because of who they are as a person, like we're blessed enough where we're in the position that, you know, any mastermind we have, we, we base that off of, what is your character? Right. Right? Like how much, what are your core values? How much do we like your core values? How in alignment with ours are yours? tough sentence um (laughs) same with the team what are your core values right right and moving forward anytime that we are hiring or bringing somebody on the team we're going to start doing something around that like let's get clear in your core values to make sure that we're all in alignment i was on a coaching call with a a client of mine recently who is going through a difficult um challenge in his intimate relationship and what we ended up doing was very simple but very, very profound. I said, okay, here's what we're going to do. We're going to take your goals. Like, what is your most important goal? Okay. Give me three. Hammer those three. Okay. One of them is is growth-oriented. One of them is impact-oriented. One of them is money-oriented. Okay. Now we're going to take your core values. We're going to write them all out. I think he had like seven. Now we're going to rate from zero to ten how congruent your girlfriend is based on these it came out to something like 25%. And and I said this, and I said, dude, trust me, I've been there, but you don't want a 25% intimate relationship. And even if... I ended up saying to him, I, I said something along the lines of, what if you had a conversation where you were truthful with her, but kind? Imagine I'm her, and tell me the truth of how you really feel and how you've really been feeling. And I could tell immediately on this Zoom call that he was scared even to tell me. And I'm like, I sense fear right now, and I'm not even her. Imagine how much fear you have telling her this. And this is difficult, but the thing is, is I can tell he's suppressed. He, he's not telling her the truth. And I don't think that's a winnable game if you're consistently hiding from whatever your truth is and maybe the only way it ever would be congruent is if you were able to tell her the truth and then and then maybe she could 
learn more about you, the real you, and then start to embody some of those qualities that are really admirable. Well, I think the that that's the core values part. The goals part is just as intricate. Right. Because I think what some people will do is either they're not clear enough on their goals. Right. So they're hanging they'll just they'll hang around with whoever because right. you know, there's no deficit to doing that, right? It's not holding them back. Or they'll adopt somebody else's goals. To, to stay in alignment right. it, without even knowing it. That's the thing. Yeah, like this you're is not, all subconscious. You're not consciously choosing this. But if you don't have goals, you're going to be pulled towards people who do. Yeah. Even if they're not your own. Even if they're not your own. Right. That's like, that's a dangerous game. Because then you're more likely to fit into that mold when you might not, that might not be you. <clears throat> my God, my voice. Imagine like a football team where... Not every, th- I think that's what's interesting. Whenever you're on a team, you used to play baseball. Mm-hmm. Whenever you're on a team, I always used to say athletes are the happiest people. And I think part of the reason is because they're healthy. But I think the other thing is they feel like they're a part of something bigger than themselves. And I think it, it's because you are immediately surrounded with people with mutual goals. Yeah. The mutual goal is to win a championship. And everyone's working towards the same thing. And the friendships and the bonds that come out of that are really powerful. So imagine being on a baseball team where one person didn't care about winning and the other person did. It would, it would probably break rapport. I'm sure you've been in situations like that. I, I'd have to... Th- it's been a long time, but probably. Probably. Right. I always wanted to win. Like you and I on this episode, ha- whenever you and I were not in rapport, it was because we had a core value in conflict or a goal in conflict. We've said this on the um, Masterminds, Anytime we get in front of these mics and we aren't clear on each other's intention, we are like out of rapport and the episode is less valuable. Also, we haven't shared this with listeners yet too, but recently I felt a disconnect between you and I. This was a couple weeks ago. We're great now. But I didn't know what it was. And so I asked, like, is there anything you're not telling me that like you, you want to talk about or anything? And it turns out we had a core value in conflict that we weren't aware of. We didn't understand. I was late. I kept being late, and and you didn't feel like I was valuing you, or it, it was a core value in conflict. Kevin values being on time very much, for sure, very much. For it, sure. And and if I'm constantly not, if I'm constantly confl- conflicting with a core value that is near and dear to him, of course we're gonna be out of rapport. That's like if if all of a sudden, and that's the thing, people change and they grow and they, and they evolve. They don't always change for the for the better. Right. And so what we did was we sat down and we had a conversation and it yeah. was like, I think that is bothering me. And it led to a lot of other things too. That's the other thing. Like right. we've done episodes on understanding and, and getting clear on your core values, but there's, there's layers to everything, right? Like there's layers to fitness. Like there's different levels of fitness, right? right? Stay at home and do this workout versus do this versus be an elite power lifter versus be on stage somewhere. Exactly. And your core values are very similar. Not only should you know your core values for yourself, but it'll also help you diagnose when you're feeling out of alignment, especially if you hang out with a certain group of people and you feel dirty after. Yeah. You'll know. know why. Like, why do, why do I? Okay, let me go through. Oh, because they were saying this kind of stuff, which is not in alignment with my core values. When it comes to goals, how... I'm trying to think of the word. Does it have to be a long-term goal or can it be like a short-term goal? Like, can it be situational? Because you just said, knowing our intentions, aka our goals for the episode, in advance helps us stay in rapport. Is it that short in, in most situations from your understanding? Great question. So I think that at all times we have a micro goal and a macro goal, whether we're aware of it or not. Um, I know some people who have a pleasure-seeking goal almost at all times. Some people are, are very much looking for fun at all times, and I don't think they understand the implications of that being their subconscious goal. So that's like a macro goal. In other words, it's, it's a constant. But I do think that goals shift based on circumstance. So for example, uh, let me think of somebody who I think is very pleasure-seeking. Okay, I'm thinking of this person right now. I'll keep it anonymous. There are times where that person is contribution-driven in a moment so, like, let's say their friend is in need and crying and really needs their help. This person I'm thinking of would always be there. 
because they have a goal to be a good friend as well. So I think it's, sometimes we have these inner civil wars of like, we're outside of alignment because our core values and our goals are not congruent. And so this is actually a really, really powerful thing. Micro and macro are attached. So I might have a macro goal to be the greatest speaker I can possibly be. You knew on some level that me being late was incongruent with that macro goal. Yeah. So you were taking the micro of me being late a few times and, and saying, if he doesn't dial this in, he's not going to be able to achieve his macro goal. That was incongruent. My long-term goals were incongruent with my short-term behavior. And so to answer your original question, I do think it's possible to go spend time with someone in their core values, in their court for their goals. I think it's difficult to stay there for long term without losing yourself if it's not fully aligned. I think there's levels of alignment. Like you and I are probably the closest to 100% other than Emilia and I. And it's like, what percentage? Like I said, 25%. We rated it. And I said, trust your intuition on this. Like, mm-hmm. like answer honestly. And I, it was very powerful exercise. And I've done this with several clients because I've had a lot of clients. You know, COVID has really challenged relationships. And it's gotten us really clear on like, oh, like this isn't as aligned as I thought. And uh, imagine a friend that you spent a lot of time with, right? And then you, COVID happens and you're quarantined. All of a sudden, quarantine's over, not over, but it's it's loosening. And all of a sudden it's like, oh, I don't feel pulled anymore to spend time with that person. Oh, why? Why is that? What was it really based on? And uh, I think we're all going through a weird time man, when it comes to relationships. And this concept in particular of like, are my goals aligned right now? And if not, why not? Macro and micro. And are my core values aligned, not only with myself, but with this other person? Um, I have a friend who I grew up around who, you know, would would say something off color and it would always bother me, but but I didn't let it tarnish the relationship. But maybe... Maybe I should. Maybe I should have had the courage to be truthful but kind and say, you know what, like I, I don't want to be around that. But I'd rather just not deal with it, right? Yeah. What do you do? What do you, what do you do if you're if you don't feel like the people in your group? If you don't feel like, I mean, family? Like, what do you do if the people that spend the most time around you don't share your core values? That's a fire question too. I would say number one is. Being okay with the fact that people are different than you. Um, And and I I think that one of the strengths that I have, and it does come with a weakness that I'll admit, is that I want people to decide for themselves. Like, I don't want you to believe what I believe because I think you should. I want you to hear what I have to say and then draw your own conclusion. Mm. Like, you don't have to believe what I believe. You and I always, like, even with my clients, like, They'll say, well, what do I do? Honestly, I don't, I'm not here to tell you what to do. I'm here to raise your awareness, and then you decide what right. to do. And there's a very different dynamic there. And so on the book club, for example, we're reading How to Be an Anti-Racist. I'm not there to make sure people believe what I believe. I'm there to learn and to hopefully raise the awareness of everybody so that we can all draw our own conclusion. Um, so I think... If you are outside of rapport with someone, at least now you'll understand why. Yeah. Yeah. And I think a vulnerable conversation is is going to rebridge the gap. I think this is one of the reasons why, and one of the unspoken about reasons why learning is so important. Because as you learn, I mean, you, obviously your ability to change your goals is there, but your core values too. Yeah. Like, w- again, we're reading how to be anti-racist. Yeah. Um, we've done a lot of different inner work around that and that is changing my core values of like oh okay I never I never looked at this in a certain way now I can update that and that also from the new level of awareness that I have helps me reflect differently I know it, it and I don't want to say I look at people differently because I don't mean that but I look at relationships that I might have maybe kept in the past and from this new level of awareness with my own core values like you know what maybe that's not in alignment like it was. Maybe that's not something I'm going to pursue. That's not something I'm going to, you know, open the line back up on. It's, it's interesting. All of it, as always, like all of this stuff creates opportunity. Yeah. I'll just leave it like that because you get to do with it what you, what you choose. Just like Alan said, we're not going to tell you what to do, 
But if you are out of alignment when it comes to your core values or your goals, it's going to feel off. Mm. And I think that's probably one of the best places to look. And we're going to do an episode on this at some point, but Kevin had a good point recently where he said, the, the closer you get, the closer you get to the truth. In other words... Jim Rohn talks about three minutes, three hours, three days. There's some people you can spend three days with, but not three, um, or, but not three weeks with. There's some people you can spend three hours with, but not three days. There's some people you can spend three minutes with, but not three hours. I think that's because of this. Yeah. If, if, if someone is fully aligned with your core values and your goals, I think synchronicity will happen naturally and organically, and I feel like you'll feel fully expressed around them. Whereas I use the example of a wedding. Everyone who goes to a wedding is there to celebrate love of a couple that they might not even spend that much time with anymore, but they knew them at some point. Yeah. So if everyone's there for a common goal to support this couple, but they don't have common core values, you're going to feel that. And so uh, last question, because it's time to go. Do you, what was a time when you felt out of alignment with someone else and what did you do about it? Oh boy. I don't know, man. I haven't always been good. It usually gets to a boiling point. Like I'll, I'll think I can name and I won't go into details, but you and I, right. it usually gets to the point where I'm just like, I don't know if I'm pretty angry. It's, it's obvious that we're not in rapport. Right. And usually you say something <laughs> that <laughs> makes it easy for me. Okay. Good. I don't, I don't know. I feel like I think I've done a very good job of, I don't really spend time with people. I don't like, I don't spend time with people who don't have similar core values, I notice it pretty quickly. Like, entitlement is my thing. Like, I don't, I cannot, I struggle very hard when it comes to dealing with people who are entitled because I'm not. Yeah. And I notice it very quickly. So that's another takeaway too. Like, if there's a common theme around people that bother you, I don't want to say bother, they tur it turns you off. Yeah. It's probably a core value that you guys don't share. It might be the core value that you value the most. The most, right. Exactly. So I would say that's like, Keep an eye on that. When you're choosing people to spend time around, yeah, it's important to choose from the results that they have and the knowledge that they have and the wisdom that they have. But also, if their core values aren't in alignment with yours, number one, it's going to be harder to learn because you're not going to be able to take in the information. You're going to struggle to. Right. And number two, you don't even know if you want to get where they are. Yeah. That's the other thing. So if you're out there right now and you're, you feel your relationships that are, are strained, you probably have strange relationships with your family, maybe your intimate partner, maybe your friends, maybe your clients. This has been a weird time in history where relationships have gotten very, very strained. It's time to have a tough conversation, be truthful but kind, and level set. Yeah. Every time you and I have ever felt out of rapport, we, we level set and we talked about it. Emilia and I, same deal. And I wish I had done a better job of this in the past. Um, but that's my intention moving forward, is to be truthful but kind not suppress, not expressing yourself is not helping because it's just going to fester. Um, so that's my only uh, recommendation. Fire. Yeah. Ladies and gentlemen, like how I hammered it like that? Yeah, strong. I, I want to wake people up in case they're sleeping. <laughs> like, wake them up, wake them up. If you are looking to start a podcast, I am doing free 30-minute consultations. If you already have a podcast, I will help you grow, scale, and monetize it if that's something you're interested in. Alan is doing free 30-minute consultations on peak performance business coaching. If you have a business, are you doing the most important things to grow that business? If not, Jeff, too, will help you. And if you don't have a business but you want to start one, please reach out. Those free calls are a lot of lot of fun. They are. Also, awesome. masterminds, masterminds every six p.m. Every six p.m. Oh my God! Every Monday, Brutal. at six p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Come learn how to plug with Jeff and Jeff. No, um, so we're doing cultivating confidence tonight. Samantha Skelly is dropping tomorrow. Oh, you jeffed it all, man. Did I? Yeah. yeah Samantha Skelly dropped yesterday for these for these fine folks. Today's Monday. Today's Wednesday. Today's Monday. No, today's Wednesday. No. Oh, gotcha. Yeah, yeah. Oh, wow. I really messed this one up. Okay, so every Monday at 6 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, we have a mastermind for you. It's absolute fire. It's absolute fire. Please join us. Reach out anytime, and myself, Kevin, or Amy will give you the Zoom link and password. Sure. Perfect. Ladies and gentlemen, we hope you enjoyed this. Up next, we are going to talk about the five most important things that we have learned from 400 episodes of the Hyperconscious Podcast. We have been in front of these microphones for, at this point, 
hundreds of hours probably. Right. Between being on air, between doing courses. I do my coaching calls a lot of times from here too. We have learned so much from the podcast, from the guests, from the solo episodes, and we're going to go through the most important things that we have learned in case you can't scroll through all 400. 400 episodes of personal development. It's it's been unreal. It's been a hell of a journey and we are uh, just getting started. Just getting started, so let's say. Yep. Ladies and gentlemen, we hope you enjoyed this. We will talk to you on Friday. Talk to you soon. Bye.